Hello there everybody, it's Sally here. Welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips. When a student cries in a lesson, have you ever had that recent? Well, yeah, I'm sure we've all had it in our lessons. Have you had it happen recently, I wonder? I had it happen to me last night with a student. It's my last one of the evening. And he was, I knew there was something wrong because he was, I'm still online and he, 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 he's usually bang on time and he was a couple of minutes late. And so I wasn't surprised that within 10 seconds of starting the lesson, he had dissolved into floods of tears, floods of tears. And I didn't know why. I didn't know whether he didn't want to come to his piano lesson. I didn't know whether it was, he hadn't done any practice. And he was, he was in such a state that he wasn't able to talk. Um, at this point, I know mum is around, but she's clearly not coming in. So what did I do? Well, instead of trying to talk to him about what the problem was, I actually gave him some space. And I just said, you know, OK, you, you're just going to need to blow your nose, get a tissue, get some water, drink some water. And I'm just going to play the piano until you're ready. And I just had a piece. Just noodled away at it. Um, until within two minutes, he was there and he was saying, oh, thank you, Sally. You know, And we were able to, to move forward with the lesson. And that idea of giving students space is a really interesting one because, as I say, I didn't know at that point what the problem was. Later on, it turns out it's nothing to do with the piano. It's just a build up of circumstances that had kind of exploded. And it was the end of the day. He was tired. He'd been, you know, playing sport and things. And this was having to go to his piano lesson online was just the kind of the culmination. But by playing and by giving him a bit of space, he was able to collect himself. And actually, we had a really lovely lesson because he'd done lots of practice. That was the really funny thing. He had done lots of practice. But it just made me think, again, that we get these small glimpses, don't we, into our students' lives. Um, just these half an hour windows, 30 minutes, 45 minutes windows into their life. And we've got, in many ways, no idea what is going on either side of that. I used to think this a lot when I taught in a school, you know, that the child would be, let's say they had their lesson at 12 o'clock or something. The child will have been up, they'll have had their breakfast a while ago, they'll have been in probably four lessons already that morning. It could have been maths, it could be English, followed by geography, maybe followed by history, and then, or French, and then they come out and they come to piano. So let's say they come from French straight to piano. Well, there they have French in a different language, a foreign language, and then they come to piano. And here we have another language. We have the musical language. And we ask them to change their roles and their hats so very, very quickly. Um, I think it's really quite, quite tough for them sometimes. So sometimes we just need to give our students more space. We need to give them a chance to make that adjustment. So it's quite nice maybe to start a lesson differently by playing to them and just give them space to get their music out, to wipe their tears, to have a drink of water, just to relax and get themselves here and now because there is only today. Tomorrow hasn't come. Yesterday is just a memory. Let's be now with our students. Give them the space to be with you. All right, that was just a little musing for me today, a little meandering around that subject. But, uh, you know, when your student cries, it's not always to do with you or the lesson. Just make it a musical experience and give them that space. Have a good afternoon teaching. Bye bye.